I'll move over, Swanson. I'm driving. Wow! Wow! <laughs> Welcome back to the Caddy Shack Minute, the podcast in which we celebrate and discuss Journey and Caddy Shack, one minute at a time. Um, I am Tom Taylor, and with me are Mike DiMaria. Hello. And Dan Lewis. Hello. 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 All right. Uh, and we are here to discuss Minute 24 of Caddy Shack, which begins with Danny telling Judge Smales that he planned to go to law school. And it ends with Carl getting his middle finger bitten by a gopher. And uh, Danny Noonan has his shirt tucked in. I just noticed that. Is that weird? He's got his T-shirt tucked into his jeans. Is that a thing? Well, they all, and Denunzio is tucked in, too. Is it really? Yeah. yeah he's tucked it was into a, his slacks. It was a okay. tucked in time. Was it? It was yeah, a tucked in time? So. Really? I, I don't know. I don't know. They, they're definitely... It must be because they're very casual otherwise. Yeah. That's the thing. I, maybe that's what bugs me. They seem like such a, care, uh, a casual, carefree, you know, feathered hair kind of period. And then they got their shirts tucked in. Yeah. But, but at I least mean, Lacey's not wearing a bra. That's the yeah, important thing. Yeah, it was definitely not a, apparently not a bra wearing time. No, you can tuck your shirt in, but you can't wear a bra. That's uh, ironic, right? We must have talked about this. How Lacey underall with no underall. You know? <laughs> right. like there's no... The very thing that, that that is her name, her titular, if you will. <laughs> what <Her> title? <laughs> get it? Didn't. What yeah. are you talking about? Right. Uh, it's it's as if. Uh, are we to read into this that she is uh, like casting off the underall name? She's she's renouncing it and and just going uh, freestyle. Right. The Manhattan the, Underalls. She's yeah, it's this kind. Of, it's this kind of attitude, thumbing her nose at the Manhattan Underalls that got her shipped out to Judge Smales for observation. Right. Uh, Sweetheart, put on your underall. We're having dinner with the 90s tonight. Oh, I don't want to. <laughs> dinner <laughs> with the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell us what happens in this minute, Tom. He just uh, did. I think I already oh, did, did it completely I? the whole thing. Boy, I, you know, I told you the beginning of the egg on toast. No, yeah. I, did, I do have a, uh, some toast here. It's that right. bread with the olives in it. Oh, oh really? I love that with the the whole olives in there. Oh, crusty, that sounds pretty good. Crusty bread, crusty bread with olives. Yeah, I'm having that now, and oh, I'm going to try and mute water. it while I. Don't bother. Could I mute yeah. while I? Don't kid yourself. No, let the people enjoy it. Yeah, I mean, I was when I was guzzling my. Oh, uh, that sounds great. When I was guzzling my ginger ale in minute three. Oh yeah, minute four. I'm sorry. Yeah, Nobody missed think. a gullop. That was a long time ago. Yeah. That was a long time ago. How long have we been doing this thing? This movie's long. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you think uh, Lacey and Spalding, I mean, they're both, I know they're not like, they don't have the same relationship to Judge Smales. He's an uncle to one and a grandfather. But do they like have like childhood memories of hanging out and stuff? And like, do they see each other at Christmas and do they get together? And That's and something you have like, to ask them, Tom, because. Yeah. Well, I'm just, I mean. It's, it's part of their backstory, yeah. Like, uh, yeah. Oh, you yeah, have an entire lineage and backstory and home life for Denunzio, but I can't wonder if uh, Lacey and, 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 and Spalding ever chat, ever chat about uh, Judge Smith. It Smale. might have been like when they were younger before cliques formed and stuff. Maybe. You know, you, you they were equals and they would always talk and maybe they had some heart-to-heart conversations. And That's what I'm saying. That's what and I'm then later on, she blossomed into the beautiful Lacey Underall. Yeah. And he wilted into the... Um, <laughs> the Spalding that stands before us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you I notice, mean, Spalding's completely exhausted from hacking away on the golf course. <laughs> <laughs> his shirt Maybe is unbuttoned. Bad. His shirt is unbuttoned all the way, and he's sweaty, and he's just pulling on that golf cart. He's got like the, the golf caddy with on wheels. Now, he does not seem to be suffering from asthma at all no. right now. So that may have just been bullshit. But even in the minute before, when right before he gets, uh, Judge Smales gets, gets hit in the, in the bollocks. Yeah. Spalding's in the background still hacking away. Yeah. He barely knows. He like glances back at, at his grandfather as he gets hit in the yarbles, but he barely he doesn't <laughs> stop his hacking away or his, yeah. or anything. He looks a little bit, yeah, but that's it. Yeah. But in this current Lace- minute, he's completely exhausted. Yeah. yeah. He's gross. But is Lacey even golfing? She, she has the glove on and stuff, but do we ever see her golfing? No. Yeah, Does she, she go never, golf? She never golfs. All right. She's a very bad character. 
You think so? I, I, it's a, and it's so gratuitous. Like she's strutting right behind them right here. And it's like, okay, at some point she's going to walk to the floor, to the <laughs> yeah. to camera Good center, to the front. And she's yeah. gonna, everybody's going to say, oh, that's right. She doesn't have a bra. She's going to deliver her one line and then walk off all sultry. Yeah. If I could do without her. I like her in Tron. I think right. I like, well, hmm. well there are parts, of, uh, we'll see. Like I mean, we, we, when we first I bet you Tron is sexier to Tom than this movie. Yeah. In some ways it is. In some ways it is. She, uh, she's very, she's either as a, as a human in Tron, she's very like kind of nerdy in a cool, like uh, early eighties way, like with the big glasses and stuff. And that's pretty cool. And then, uh, like in the, in the computery world, maybe I'm, not into her. maybe I'm only into her as a human with the glasses. Maybe it's just the glasses. I don't know. It's that easy for you, Tom. Put these glasses on. Oh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, it turns my uh, sister into Diana Prince, and it turns uh, Again with the sister. A, a boring program into a, a, a hot, nerdy chick. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Awkward cough. <laughs> <laughs> that was my yeah. cough. Ladies and gentlemen, he's a master of the awkward cough. <laughs> <laughs> that's the cough that I just said. Did I say that out loud? Right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway uh, as i was saying uh, uh i have a uh i have a controversial thing to say about this minute no i am bored to tears by the carl gopher yeah. storyline yeah, i don't like it i don't like it uh, I, I i i can push back on this one a little bit i i'm with you it's not my favorite part but there's a lot of charisma there bill bill murray is very charismatic and the way he kind of delivers his lines I do. Find I like him. I like Carl, and I like Bill Murray. But I and it, it took me. I, I was thinking about this a lot because, it's like, oh my gosh, do I not like Bill Murray in this movie? This is so boring and stupid. And I'm like, oh, is it just the go from? Like, oh, maybe because I thought of every other scene with him in it. You know, not to skip ahead or anything, oh. but he's great in almost every scene, except for the ones where it's all very gopher centric. Oh, I see what I you think. mean. So, so it's more just that it is all about. It's that you don't that nothing moves you in that storyline. There's a subplot. Right. Or, um, I don't know, depending on how you look at it, it could very well be the main plot of the movie, actually, when you think uh, about it. It's but, a solid uh, B story. Okay, well, anyway, uh, th- it's a subplot, but uh, that's what it is. It, it bothers you that it's that. It's like maybe you enjoy Bill Murray, but they're not using him until his greatest uh, for his Not greatest in these effects. scenes. He, he's preoccupied by these dumb scenes. and I, I, yeah. I, I don't hate them. I'm just, I, like, I was watching this minute, and I was like, oh, really? I realized as I saw him appear, like with the hose between his legs and stuff, I was like, "Ah, oh, really?" Yeah. I was having fun with Judge Smales a second ago. Everybody's yeah. dancing a journey over there. Maybe it's just know. because anything, anytime something's right after like great, like Smales and Spalding and all the great stuff, yeah. maybe it's hard for anything to hold up to that. That's true. Well, the, well, yeah. Danny and Smales are walking and having their discussion. You get farther away from the dancing. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Uh. Chervik is disappearing into the. He's dancing, but he's all the way on his own on the left side. Oh, really? And everybody else is kind of <laughs> around where the the Scots are, and Ronnie's still waving his hands over his head, but he's starting to get closer to the trees, and then he kind of saunters back a little bit. But he's literally, he's a good, you know, forty feet away from everybody else. At least, yeah, he's he, even more. He, he's dancing over to have a whiz, maybe. Yeah, think. or like trying not to be noticed dancing off. So he's gonna. I've done that at outdoor parties where I've maybe, like danced off to go have a, a leak. Or maybe yeah. it's uh, maybe it's 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 the actor Rodney just trying to saunter off camera so he can take a break or something. Well, I was gonna say, is there any chance that that's not Rodney? Oh yeah, yeah, it could be. I don't know. You can't you can't make out anybody in this. In this yeah. Movie. I'm, I think I'm for watching that right scene, now, yeah, I think you're okay using doubles for those scenes. Yeah, the other. way he's moving, he's 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 yeah, it's, it doesn't have the Rodney uh, jerky grace. But I'm it's funny say, that he's all the way off by his myself. That is awesome. Yeah, that is he started fun. this whole thing, and I was just dancing by himself. Yeah, no, he's just trying to back away and get back away from the scene. So what? So let's not dance. Yeah, yeah. So what? So I'm done dancing. Yeah, and the inside he's like, you know, uh, I don't really like Journey, and how am I going to get out of this dancing? Yeah, I'm I didn't know Journey was going to be this, on the radio when I turned you know, it on. Yeah, I thought it was going to be uh, yeah, Fog Hat. We, yeah, Fog Hat. <laughs> I thought it, so yeah, was, yeah. was going to be New York, New York. But it's, uh, yeah, I thought, exactly. I thought it was going to be this Martin. modern shit. Yeah, all these long hairs. Um, yeah, one of the so, best lines, too. We're coming up one to of my, one of the best lines. lines, and it's maybe, you guys have said this in the past, 
that this is like maybe your line that uh, I think maybe Thomas said this, that this is your line that you use more than any other line in like life. But I have used the world needs ditch diggers too yeah. more often than any other line in this movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's worthy. It's worthy of that. It's useful. And it's got it's a, funny. yeah, it's got a, uh, yeah, it's useful. It's got a, um, a kind of hooray for the Douglases quality. I was going to say, kind yeah. of be thrown in. It's like the flip side of hurry for the Douglases. <laughs> yeah, right. Anytime someone says something bad happens, <laughs> movies, that world needs ditch diggers too. Yeah, it's like yeah. the Bizarro Douglases. Yeah. Yeah, right. Oh, the, the, the Douglases thing. didn't get to have their house painted. Oh, well, you know, the world needs ditch diggers too. But it's also <laughs> it's also an FU line. Oh, totally. It's yeah. all because you could always you could also say you could replace anytime you want to tell you want to if, in any situation where you tell somebody. Go after yourself. You could say this. Well, the yeah, world yeah, needs ditch right. diggers too. Right. And then, yeah, exactly. Although I don't know if anybody can do it, can can deliver it the way uh, George Smales does. The world uh, needs ditch diggers too. And he's I getting can't. bugged too because he knows where he's going with it and his eyes are getting wild. <laughs> <laughs> he's just being a total di- yeah. Would that have been his response if he wasn't already pissed off about the music and everything and getting hit in the nuts? Would yeah, he, maybe. He, I, I'm not sure. That is a very good question. But Danny yeah. didn't do himself any favors by picking this. Yeah, line really. To ask for money, in a sense, because he's asking yeah. for money. Yeah, read the room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's still stinging from being hit in the yarbalacos. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if he has any yarbles. <laughs> if thou was yeah. to have any yarbles, he got it. You know, although we did discuss in, pre- in the previous minute that he doesn't really get hit in the short ones. No, he really doesn't. It's right near the ba- sort of the base. Yeah, the dong. Yeah, right. Like, if anything, it's the lower kind of like where you get a hernia or something. Right. Like maybe if depending on how he positions himself in there, maybe he actually gets hit in his his dingly dangler. I'm saying this as I look at Carl with the hose between his legs right now. Probably not. Yeah, it seems to me like it's above that in the kind of Kendall area where there's just yeah, yeah, exactly. It's in the Kendall area. It is what it is. Mm-hmm. No, you can't argue with that. You cannot then, argue with things being what they are. There's no, you, know. you can't get into an argument with somebody. But, no, I disagree. I don't think it is what it is. I don't think it is what it is. Well, I you just said it. Is I it think is. it's something it isn't. But, 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 now but, we're getting into like the meaning of life. Yeah. Uh huh. Right. We're gonna dig I think down. The cat now. is both dead and alive. Right. Let's open the box and find out. Right. Yeah. Uh, speaking of cats and gophers, we weren't talking about gophers. It was a, it was a clumsy segue, and it's I amazing apologize. to me that you'd want to get back into the Gopher, but please. Well, no, no I do. I, I've, I've ripped on it already, and now I. But I have something positive to say about it. I think technically, like in a, I don't know if you call it special. It's a special effects, I guess. This scene is actually really impressive because in all these long shots of Carl, like he he shoves the hose down the hole, down the one hole, and then there's like an insert shot of like the the Gopher popping out of another hole, but then they cut to like a long shot again. So in that scene, on that golf course, there is somehow a guy underground operating that puppet in the back of the, you know, in the, in the, in the background of the scene. And A, I don't know how he's down there. Like, it's really kind of seamless. It's not like, oh, they built like a bush or something and his arm is clearly under the, like, you can't see. And then Carl jumps right onto that spot and lands like right by the hole. Oh. And it's clear that it's just like solid ground. It's just, it's grass and ground and dirt. It's not like a like a fake hill that they made so that they could put a puppeteer under there or something. Uh-huh. I'm just impressed by that. It's very seamless and very solid. And uh, and I'm going to say something controversial. I keep uh, uh, telegraphing that I'm going to say something controversial. But uh, I think they did a better job here than in some of the parts on uh, Dagobah, where they clearly have like a sort of plank floor with like mud and dirt on it. Yeah. And you can kind of see it move a little bit when Luke Skywalker walks past Yoda sometimes. I'm not... I'm not familiar with Dagobah and Luke Skywalker. Is this from another movie? It's from a motion picture called uh, The Empire Strikes Back. It is the second in the Star Wars trilogy. Oh. It's a movie about a basketball team that wins. Mm, all. You wish. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's good work there. And also, can I say just before that shot, when he's standing in the foreground, in the, in the hole in the foreground with the hose, Mm-hmm. And he's sort of posed above it, sort of like Washington crossing the Delaware. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it, yeah. It's a very beautifully composed shot. There's something about that shot that I really, really like. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know how. No, you're right. I don't know why I like this shot so much, but it's got this great kind of almost like it would have been painted back in the day. Yeah. Gorgeous, sort of sweeping 
Go ahead, when Mike. you talk about your favorite line, that's my favorite pose of the movie. And I've sh- I've shaken my fist like him more than I've shaken my fist like anybody before. <laughs> and you've shaken your fist a lot. Because there's a little dip to his knee when he shakes, and it's like a little soft little like menace yeah. to the golfing industry. Menace. It's almost like he's practicing yeah. a, a fist shake. Yeah. But he also means it. But it's like he's ex- it's it's an extension of what he's saying is the fist shake. Yeah. yeah. And I've done That's that good. fist shake more than any other fist shake. In, in I think it's fair to say, Mike, that you've shaken your fist at the heavens more than any. Yeah. Like any one I person I know. Mm-hmm. But it's a defiant shake. He's shaking it to 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 the to the underworld. <laughs> the reverse. <laughs> it's the, the of the it's underworld. It's the reverse par- paradise lost. Yeah. You see, it's the devil has fallen yeah. to the in in in. Paradise Lost, the devil has fallen to the heavens and smashed onto the craggy ground of, of hell, and then he shakes his fist up to God. Better to yeah. rule down here than to, than to serve up there. Yeah. That's, that's a quote from Star Trek. Anyway, go ahead. Uh, uh, no, no, it's not, Tom. No, it's not. It's from uh, Space Seed, the episode Space Seed with uh, Khan. Yeah, but it's taken oh, from... But it's taken from... They say something about Milton or something, but uh, I don't know what that means. Uh, Star Paradise Trek. Lost. Oh, interesting. Right, which I think Paradise Lost preceded Star Trek by at least a couple Uh, decades. I don't know. I've never heard of no Paradise Lost. I think, yeah. So, but yeah, you're right. He's uh, he's flipping that, and he's 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 shaking his fist to the the depths of hell where this gopher's from. It's great. I've I've paused it right now. He's standing in the big boots that are too big for him. (laughs) He's standing astride of the hose that he's just laid in the hole. He's got his fist in the air, and he's looking down at it defiantly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's a beautiful sort of sweeping vista behind him. Uh, Bob Ross clouds in the background. If, if, there are any, <laughs> if there are any painters out there, this is the still from the movie that I want. Even though, like Tom, this is not my favorite storyline of the movie, I think that the, there's, just a, there's a, just a beauty to this composition. And uh, I must say, um, uh, Ramis, this is Ramis learning. It is. It's frustrating because yeah, it's such a boring scene, but it's got some of the best filmmaking going on. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. Yep. I should also point out I was complaining about this a lot in the early part of the movie that uh, you would get what you would want to be a complete, uh, vast, uninterrupted vista of golf course, mm-hmm. but then you'd have like a you know like a like an ice cream truck going by or something. <laughs> These scenes here are nice and satisfying and uninterrupted, and right. uh, you know. This is the way it's it's the there's no Dodge down. Chargers in the shot. Anymore. No, no, no. Yeah, there's no, uh, you know, Plymouth. What is that one? The Dodge, <laughs> Dark, the Plymouth Reliant, or Valiant. The, the Valiant, the Gremlins, the Gremlins. <laughs> you see a lot of those Gremlins out here. You know. Oh, really? Yeah, I just think you see I'm a sorry. lot of cars that they don't rust out here the way they do in Chicago. Oh, sure. You'll often see these like cars that it's not that somebody's like been a real freak about taking care of it. Yeah. They just don't drive it that much, and they've had it for 40 years. Now, is that true in all of California, or is it just true up where you are? Well, that, I would that, imagine that, Death Valley is pretty rough on a car. Yeah. But well, around here, the Los... temperature never gets to freezing, yeah. and it never gets super hot, and there's never any salt on the road, sort of like getting up in the wheel wells. Yeah, and that's what people would everything. say to me. When I, I spent a, a semester in Los Angeles in college, and I bought a car there. I bought my first used car there. And uh, my uncle was helping me out. He's like, oh, you know, one thing that's, that's great is there's no salt. You know, it doesn't snow, so they don't put salt on the road. So, like, the cars are in really great shape. I'm like, oh, that's fantastic. But what I didn't realize, and what he should have told me, is that uh, all the pl- – it was like the Andromeda strain. All the plastic in the car, like all the rubber hoses in the engine uh-huh. were so weakened by the pollution uh-huh. that I'd be driving down the street and all of a sudden, like, I'd just be smelling coolant and green gases coming out of my car <laughs> and everything. Like all the hoses in the car were just like derezzing as a Tron reference. Oh, and uh, so you would, it was a trade off. Like, well, do I want some rust or do I want a car that's not, you know, its innards aren't just belching? Oh, my goodness. Up your nose with the rubber hose. That exactly. whole story was so rife with Tron and Andromeda strain references that, that was, yeah. you need, a, yeah, you, you need a, a degree in nerddom just to understand that story completely. You need yeah, to be well, a nerdlinger. I, I, <laughs> you had to come over on the SS Nerdlinger. As many of us did. <laughs> no, it's true, but all you know. So that's the upside. I, I don't want to make it sound like it's so great. I don't really care about the cars here, but I will say that the, <laughs> the downside is that everything closes at nine thirty at night. <laughs> so that's where you can't so go anywhere in your car, take. and that saves it too. 
maybe that's what's depressing Denunzio. Uh, he's, he's just thinking about the give and take of life. That, right, you know, I gotta, he, yeah. You can't have a saltless and operating car at the same time. Right. I got to go to the discotheque later, but it's going to be closed by the time we've, if we're going to be dancing to Journey all day. Yeah, it's going to be closed, but my car is not going to taste like salt. Maybe he's like Mongo from Blazing Saddles. Oh, yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe right. He can, he, he's yeah, only he's, a pawn in Game yeah, of Life. He's the guy who, th- who you think is the dumb one, but then he lays down the, the very yeah, thoughtful, the thought-provoking truth. line. Mm-hmm. He's down the Mongo truth. only pawn in Game of Life. Oh, you know what else I hate about this scene? Uh, the music is really goofy. The music oh, is very. Oh, you mean for cartoon. when he's tracking the? Uh, they go into the Patton style music when he's tracking the yeah. gopher. Or... Yeah. Yeah, but it's yeah. but it's not it's not cool Patton. It's like it's like it's like I don't know what it is exactly. It's uh, it's like Disney, you know, kind of goofy family fun like, music. Yeah. Oh, the light. It's got that zip, like when when you're watching, um, what is that shit, Sound of Music or something, and somebody drops something on the ground in some goofy scene, and you get that zzzz, like noise. A little bit. It's, it, it's, it's like incidental music. It's like, I think it shows up when the when the gopher pops up for the first time. And I'm sure it's like Johnny Mandel, who's our friend and everything, but he, I guess a lot of the scores he would do are this kind of stuff, this kind of... Right. Kind of canned-sounding, kind of love boaty kind of jerky bullshit i don't know i got angry I'm <laughs> incidentally <sorry>. it sucks <laughs> that's exactly how it sucks <laughs> i agree i agree so, you're not wrong you know, to use your language problems, right you know there's this the relationship between spackler and the gopher is not suiting at the not suiting things the best yeah i don't yeah. care about it uh, she gotta blow up the golf course at some point right yeah yeah, I wonder if it, yeah, is there a way this could have been uh, done more? Set? I mean, there's fun stuff. He gets bit on the, I think, I do think it's funny that he reaches in and gives him the middle finger. I think that's funny. And then he gets bit on it. That's funny. I like the middle finger, I was going to say, and I thought I might be alone with that. I'm glad to hear that you like the yeah. middle finger too. Something about that, the random middle finger for no reason getting bitten. Yeah. Yeah. I the like show's that. bringing us together. Mm-hmm. We have a lot in common. Say like a broken line when he sees he sees the gopher. And he says, when I've been pushed. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he doesn't finish his thought. Yeah, I can never tell if he's if it, if there's something missing from the beginning or the end of that. Like, yeah. if he's about to say something else or, if, like, something, something, when I've been pushed. Or like, yeah, but you're right. It's totally just and then like he goes into there. something else. Yeah. Something, eh? I guess. Yeah. <laughs> 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 around you, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not a great movie for complete sentences or thoughts. <laughs> no, that should be the tagline. Yeah. <laughs> not a great movie for complete sentences and thoughts. Yeah, that was Leonard Maltin's review, actually. <laughs> <laughs> eh, three and a half stars. <laughs> it was great on subjects, but bad on predicates. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of dangling modifiers. Right, yeah. A lot of incomplete thoughts. I'll give this two ellipses down. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, poor Caddyshack. Yeah, I'm sure, it's doing quite well in the rental market. It should be thanks to us. I tell you what, right now, Blockbuster went up. Did they had a business Blockbuster? I you feel know? like there's like maybe one store somewhere, but yeah, flagship store somewhere. But I, I think I, my friend Ted and I kept Blockbuster going probably an extra year. With the number of times <laughs> that we rented Caddyshack. Let's just get Caddyshack again. That's dedication. And that was a big deal. Like we didn't have a copy of Caddyshack. We just kept renting it. Like like some dude who goes into a bar and just puts on the same song over and over on the yeah. jukebox without buying it. Right. right. Everybody groans. Oh, oh here really, comes Bill. Here, go. oh, here he goes. Not <laughs> not not Kenny Loggins again. <laughs> <laughs> not Lights by Journey. I actually oh, like that. <laughs> <laughs> did you ever do the math like to see oh we could have just like kept this and paid the fine and 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 owned caddyshack that way without having to rent it over and over again there was a there was an excitement i believe with and i don't want to you know things are better now than they used to be when you had to rent movies overall but i will say that there was an excitement to renting a movie where you just oh, yeah. you get it captured for this period of time and you there was a yeah it was momentous and i i feel like that that sort of doesn't happen with with movies on demand now. Well, the, the, the problem was, is you would go there and you'd say, okay, what if it's not there? 
Oh right, right, right. right. Taken out. They'd some some places uh, they'd have the they'd have the uh, they'd have the box and they'd put like a little piece of paper in the box so that you would say, oh, that it's still here. So you'd take the piece of paper out and right. you'd walk it up to the front. It's over there. Yeah, just over there. <laughs> Yeah, yeah so I what did it. I rent when I didn't get Caddyshack? I wonder what what it was that I would do. It was always like some, you know, some insane thing like Faces of Death or some, or maybe some other, <laughs> you know, just some weird movie, probably. Yeah. I, don't I remember uh, I would I, I more than once my friend and I would go to Blockbuster or some other place. And we would just stand there for hours, like ah, oh, I can't, I can't decide what to, I don't know. And I would always there would be a, a fleeting thought in my head. And it w- it wouldn't be fully like an idea like that I would actually do, but for a second it w- I would almost consider, oh, I'll just rent Star Wars, even though I had like seven or eight versions of Star Wars at home. Like I would I would I would see a movie that I owned that I liked, and like oh, I guess we could just re- no that'd be stupid. I already have it at home. But like you you get so anxious, you're like I just I want to rent something. I came here to rent a movie and I can't decide on anything. And yeah. I'm just gonna I know I like that movie because I have it at home. I paid money to own it. So I don't have to rent it. So maybe I should rent it because I, I got to rent something. Yeah, there was a different kind of thing to renting a movie. Yeah, my finger on. Yeah, you had got to out of the house for one thing. Yeah, you get out, you go take a walk. Let's walk down to the Blockbuster yeah. or one of the other uh, one of your mom and pop shops. And yeah, you'd have those cards because you'd have like five or six different cards to different. <laughs> yeah, for different places. And you'd go to the mo- the ones that were a little seedier. Yeah. So then you go so, <laughs> into the beaded room. Yeah, room with the, yeah the, the hanging beads. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. that was a little back room. Yeah, you'd walk, oh, you'd, you think my buddy went in here? Yeah, you'd walk because they would have like the sports documentaries in the back. Yeah. Right by the beaded the one with the beaded room. So you'd go back there and you'd say, oh, let's see. Uh, the gateway. Yeah, here's a little, the 88 Dodgers. So you'd go <laughs> and look at it. Maybe that and, continues behind uh, these beads. And then you'd yeah, and then you'd see the eighty eight Rogers. <laughs> <laughs> but then you'd go in there and then you'd and you'd and you'd you'd get in there in the in the beaded room. And mm-hmm. there's there's just you the minute you'd go in there, you'd immediately feel that you're now in like a different dimension. So I'm sorry, the lights the lighting is different. It's <laughs> yeah. a red it's like the red light district. Yeah. Did but you they, say the the beaded room or the light? beaded room? The What's beaded? a beaded door? So there's a door that's <laughs> beads. Yeah, I had oh wait, what did you say there, Tom? I missed it then. I, I said, did you say the beat it room or oh. the beat it room? <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't say. Yeah, that's all right. But nah. you cross over and it, it was or like it's like going sticky. over. It's like it's like crossing the ocean and going in, and, you, and all of a sudden you're in you're in you're yeah, in south so of France, where the world in Morocco. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So there's a guy in the corner with a hookah. <laughs> yeah, it's all smoky, and there's a like an opium den. <laughs> Yeah, like right. a Chinese opium den from right. Right, there's a snake opium. charmer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you're immediately all sweaty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's hotter in there. Yeah, like, how am I going to get out of here? Yeah. So, <laughs> and everybody's speaking six or seven different languages. Yeah. yeah. And you go into the, you go into the, <laughs> you go into that like um, tunnel sequence from Willy Wonka. Yeah. You know, the light's all different and, and there's weird <laughs> stuff going on. Chicken gets his head cut off. <laughs> Oh, that's where it's growing. I think the chicken I don't got, know. The chicken growing. Got, <laughs> the chicken got choked in that one, not that. <laughs> and, and then you also yeah, yeah, your ID is gone. And you, you can't got, get back to your homeland. And in your head you say, Okay, it's like mission. It's like it's like mission impossible. I got thirty seconds yeah. to pick one and get out. Get out before those beads stop moving. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Before they send someone in after, you gotta them. jump around all the lasers and get through yeah. the beat door again. <laughs> you grab, yeah, so you grab one, and you just hope it's one you haven't grabbed before. Yeah, and you head out, and then you have to get. I always had to get two regular straight laced movies. <laughs> yeah, to stack it to make the the porn sandwich movie. Yeah, yeah the porn in the middle. <laughs> you got maybe Caddyshack on top. Uh-huh. And the documentary on the eighty-eight right. Dodgers on the bottom. Sure. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Like I didn't oh, know. I didn't know you were like Merchant and Ivory. <laughs> what are you? What are you doing with Howard Zen? Don't oh, wait a minute. Uh, yeah, one of these combs. Uh, one of those uh, pocket squares. A pint of old Harper. Uh, Butt Masters three. Uh, <laughs> yeah, one of those sense. newspapers. Oh, yeah, give me some yeah, chiclets. Yeah, <laughs> six of, yeah, chiclets. I'll take some of that, <laughs> that Orville Redenbacher butter popcorn. <laughs> and I guess I'll take this. Yeah. Um, and do you have a brown paper bag to put this all in? <laughs> something ooh, not something that. not see through. <laughs> My friends used to make me go to um 
I was the tallest, I guess. So that may, <laughs> somehow <laughs> made me seem the oldest. I can assure you that you were. Yeah, no, I, I guarantee I was the oldest, but somehow that made me seem like the oldest. Like I was the one who was supposed to go on and do this. Yeah, right. Everybody <laughs> you put your, your trench coat on. Everybody thought you were three kids <laughs> yeah. stacked up. I'm like holding my <laughs> finger under my lip like a mustache. Hello. <laughs> And um, I would, uh, it was like the regular, it was like the news stores, like the regular, like, you know, like everybody, the commuters on their way to the train, stop and get their newspaper and buy a sports illustrator or something. And I happened to know they had Playboy and Penthouse that they sold from behind the counter. And so <laughs> it was me and my buddy, Mark Heideman, you're probably listening to this, curse you for making me do this. Uh, they would send me in there and like, you know, my buddy would, oh, get me, get me a Playboy. Oh yeah, get me a Playboy, but I also want a penthouse. I'm like, all right, I, I should probably get a penthouse for myself too. And so I'd walk in and there'd be like a super nice lady behind the counter and she's like, you know, just kind of looking at here comes a nice, he's a nice young gentleman. He's going to buy a stick of gum and a, and a candy bar for later on after he reads his comic books by the lake. And uh, I'm like, can I please have one penthouse, two playboys, <laughs> and a hustler? And it was like a grocery list of like porn that I needed. And it, like her face just went, oh, oh man. And she said, but she sold it to me. God oh, bless her. Oh. I got oh, stuff, yeah. guys. I was like in, I don't know, uh, I'll say middle, like old middle school, like maybe like eighth grade or something right. or ninth grade, maybe. Wow. You didn't need the old porn all roll, all, all torn up in the woods. <laughs> no, yeah. They got, cleaned you that up got the new it. stuff. Yeah, buy the new stuff. Yeah. Wow. Oh, actually, let me think. I think it was 1986. So I was like, uh, yeah, I was like middle school or something. Eh, no, I was like early high school. I was like probably freshman or something. Jeez. I yeah. didn't have anybody that could go by like that. There's no way I'm going in there and ordering that stuff. You got some cojones on you, my friend. Everyone needs a tall Tom. I hated that. I hated that. I felt horrible. I would see the woman and I see the smile on her. I'm like, oh, she thinks I'm a nice guy. But really, I'm the devil because <laughs> I'm here to buy pornography. I'm going to yeah. use my my money that I earned, you know, whatever, doing a nice job, like helping the old man down the street, mowing his lawn and raking his leaves. I'm going to take that money, that blessed yeah, I'm money. Buy something dirty. <laughs> yeah. Buy something dirty. Yeah. That would make that man hate me if he and knew. She the thought, what's doing. going on with the youth today? Kind of, she had that thought, <laughs> and that was the beginning of the Christian right. The big rev- the, when the focus on the family started yeah. up. Started it, with me. It started with Tom going in there and ordering <laughs> those. Yeah. And everyone just thought, oh, here we go. Oh, and speaking of things you quote every day, I quote, this is a real life quote that I use almost every single day of my life because my friend Sean Haynes and I, we go to the Tokenique news store and we'd be looking at uh, Starlog magazines and stuff, reading about Return of the Jedi and things. And of course, right next, it was just a big wall of magazines. And I went into this place like this summer when I was home and I, I went into this, it's exactly the same, the same guy's there, except he's like now 80 or something. There's like this wall of magazines and it's right next to the counter. So you can't get away with too much, but we would always, as kids, we would be like, okay, I'm reading my Mad Magazine, my Starlog. But if I just inch over here, I could probably grab myself a, a Playboy or a penthouse, which we would do sometimes. But then the old lady who was there, she'd come over, and my friend's dad was a cop in town. And she, this one time she saw us with a thing, and she took it from us. She said, this is not for you. Officer Haynes would not approve. <laughs> and I quote that almost every single day. Every time okay. I see, like, my Officer son doing Haynes something. Officer Haynes would not approve. Officer Haynes would not approve. <laughs> this is not for you. A formative experience for you, Tom. I'm like, I don't know. I think that my, I think we are the target audience for that. I think that is for us. This is for me for sure. Yeah. You should have grabbed it, swiped it right back and say, this is for me. This and is for me. It back and say, no, it's not. It's not for you. <laughs> Officer Haynes for- doesn't have to find out. Right. Tall Tom doesn't have, they can't read Starlog all night. At some point, I got to switch over Actually, to something I else. I still have boxes of those things. Really? Starlog? Yeah. If somebody make me an offer. You had I all those magazines. About- you could have learned anything about the world you wanted. You could have gotten the Utney <laughs> Reader or, or or Harper's or any any Home and Garden anything. Instead, Omni. it's all Starlog. Yeah, just There's not a few fantastic a damn thing that's worth anything. <laughs> a couple of cracks. I used, a couple to, of I used to. I used to swipe mine. I didn't. I never wore. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I, I, there was something. Wrong. It was something really wrong with me. Sure. Well, that's kind of all American. I would, uh, I would do it in a very calm way, and it would be like that's how you do my, it. And no, yeah. in my head there was like, not, I, well, I'm going to go steal today. It was like oh. nothing. There was nothing wrong. Like I, well, you had like a klepto streak. Is it? No, it wasn't. It was just like, well, that's what I have to do to get this. <laughs> so I would walk I'm to not this. Pay money. <laughs> I used to walk to the strip mall. It's like a mile and a half from the house. I would just get walk it. there. And I, in my head, I would say, I'm going to go get a sandwich at the, at the strip mall. Oh. So I'd walk there, and i say, that's it. All I'm going to do now is go get a sandwich. And I'd walk by the, the bookstore. It was like this little mom-and-pop bookstore. 
porn sandwich. And I would yeah. say, and I'm going to steal a, 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 a magazine. So I'd go in there and I'd, I'd buy two of any just like popular mechanics or just some ridiculous <laughs> mag, <laughs> magazine that, made no, that would red flag right off the bat. Right, just, yeah. You know, like, I'm like tw- cat fancy. Uh, yeah, I'm like 10 years old or whatever. I'm like, <laughs> oh, how, how are you today, Mr. Sandington? I'm doing okay. Scientific American. It's a, it's a yeah. wonderful day out there today, isn't it? I, but I do this like every weekend. I go down there and I say, hmm, I think I'll take, I'll take one of those popular mechanics. And I will take, you know, a, 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 this knitting magazine from my mother. <laughs> and then I would say, you know what, I'm going to get this, 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 this dog calendar as well. And I would, I would pay for it. <laughs> and, they, and I'd say, can you give me a bag? And they'd give me the, oh. but before I'd go pay, I'd walk over to where the, they kept the magazines. They had them close to the counter. Impulse would, buys. No, but it was on the customer side. So in my oh, mind, I'm like, you fucking idiot. <laughs> the dirty yeah. magazines go behind the counter. You so fool. therefore, I have every right to lesson. do what I'm going to do right now. I'm a 10-year-old kid or not, whatever I was. Really? I was like 10 or 11, maybe 12. Okay, 12. You guys are like my heroes. I was like 12 years old, and we were like, again, we'd just walk outside and walk three or four miles to the, to the store because yeah. no one would watch us. I'd buy a sandwich, and I'd say, I'm going to steal this now because you put it on the other side. You deserve this. Right. You made me you, do this. You made me do this. I'm a 12 year old kid <laughs> who's going through changes. <laughs> There's I need certain this. things that I have to do and I have right. to figure out. Right. And, and only this. Jessica Hahn can help and me. The only <laughs> way I can do this is with this magazine. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You son of a bitch. If you put it behind the counter, I will come in and I'll say, God, I wish I could get one of those. But, Look what you made me do. But the, this this very smart shop owner put it back there <laughs> to save me from myself. And I you stole it, though. You just threw it in the bag? No, no. I would go and I would say, again, I would I would take the magazine out like I'm looking at it, but they wouldn't see me. Yeah. And I this is before I buy, buy anything. Then I would walk to the back and I'd set it next to some other magazines. Yeah. Oh, I see. Uh, and oh, I would I take my three, my two just ridiculous magazines and a calendar I'd walk up to the front, and then I'd pay for it, and I'd say, can you have a bag? Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. Oh, you know what? I think I'm going to get something else. And then I'd walk yeah. in the back with the bag, and I'd start fiddling around, and then I'd slip it in the bag. Oh, I see. Nice. So wow, walk. you're like a pro thief, like a, like, a, like a great burglar. Yeah, but again, it was, you're making me do this. Yeah, it's not my fault. I am full of of raging thoughts. <laughs> You're complicit and in I'm this. going through changes. <laughs> and you shouldn't have these on this side of the counter. You know, I maybe think it would have held, yeah, held up in court. In also, memory, thank you. At the time, you probably thought like, oh, I'm getting I have to do this elaborate ruse, mm-hmm. almost like this uh it's a know, dance. Yeah. And then <laughs> well choreographed uh, thievery that I'm doing. In the meantime, the guy knows, or whoever's working behind the counter knows all about it, but just like, I'm not confronting this 12 year old pervert. You can yeah. just take the magazine for all yeah. I care. Or yeah. the guy's like, hey, I don't own this I was place. 12 once. I was 12, and I wish the magazines had been on the outside so I could get them and, you know, have a good time. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, young Mike D. Maria, I'm going to cut him some slack. Yeah. Gonna, uh, and then you'd walk the two miles back home. And, in the, and, and then you would feel that shame because it was like, I can't believe I just did that again. How many times did you do this, Mike? I, it could have been summers. I don't know. Summers? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it would be. Might as well ask me. Yeah. August? But, yeah, you might as well ask the Kennedys how many times they visited Martha's Vineyard. <laughs> like, oh, it was summers. Chappaquiddick. <laughs> summers worth of porn. Oh, my gosh. No, I don't. I mean, no, I wasn't. I mean, it, I wasn't left alone, but it was like, if, if, okay, I'm going to the store for an hour or two. I'm going to go get a sandwich. I'd walk up to the sandwich to get a sandwich and then I'd come back with them. And then I would say, oh, you know what? I feel like I'm going to, I, I'm feeling a little, I'm feeling a little under the weather. So I'm going to go upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> then you wouldn't see me for two days. Time by myself. I, I can't, I don't know how you got with, with all the stealing and stuff. I remember I stole one of my earliest memories. In fact, was stealing a, a pack of Bubblicious and just oh, wow. being just filled with massive amounts of guilt. No, I was, I was racked completely with guilt. Uh-huh. I felt horrified by it. How'd you ease the pain, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> How'd you right. get over that? And then no, but when it, <laughs> you gotta work. You gotta work that off somehow. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I'd go up to my room, 
and I would, keep going. And I would be in there for a while, and I'd come out, my hair sticking straight up. <laughs> I read all. I read all the. I read all the articles. You read all the articles. All the all the jokes. <laughs> I read all the jokes and looked at all the. Yeah, the you read the Joyce the Joyce Carol Oates interview. <laughs> But then, but then I was like, I I got to get this out of the house because it can't stay in the house overnight. Like I can't. I you was, put it in the woods. No, it's it's like full circle. Full circle. <laughs> it was me all along. <laughs> thank you, Mike. I'm waiting all these years to thank you. For oh that. my God, you're yeah. the one planting all those. You're that. You're that beautiful son of a bitch who's who's, who's doing the hobo stash in the woods. It's just it's like, over there. It's like upstream color. No, so I, I would have, would have to get out of the house. So then I just I just figured it out. This was my vicious circle why I would have to go back to the store again. Yeah. Because it was, I would have to get it out of the house, but it wouldn't be, can I put it somewhere like the woods where I could always go get it? It would have to be destroyed. Oh, oh wow. It would have to be like, I got to shred it or I got to get it out of the house. And then it would be like, okay, I feel better now because it's, it's torn up and it's in the garbage and it just went outside to the garbage and the truck took it away. Oh my goodness! I'd be like, okay, now, I feel better now. And then what happens twenty minutes later? <laughs> I wish I had that magazine again. Yeah. So oh. you had to burn it. You had to. Oh my god! Yeah. Man, that's wrong to burn that stuff. Didn't you? Didn't you read Fahrenheit four fifty one? You shouldn't yeah, be burning stuff yeah. like that. How about recycling or something? Yeah. No, it was a vicious cycle because then your own anxiety comes into play, your own guilt, and you felt terrible. I got to get it out of here. I got to get back to my normal life. Yeah. Imagine what burned up with those things. I uh, used to be a good kid. And then 15 minutes after it was gone, you're like, oh, shit, I wish I still had that. <laughs> oh, I got to trek back to the store. <laughs> oh, I got to go back. I got to do my whole song and dance again. Oh, <laughs> well, I, I forgot to get Reader's Digest. <laughs> Hello, what kind Mr. of sandwich Sanderson, you get? I'm like, back. When you have that kind of sandwich now where you do, you get all sweaty and kind of like, yeah, oh, like a clockwork know. orange effect when he has the sandwich. <laughs> it was, it was, it was Steve's Deli. Uh-huh. Oh yeah, it was Steve's Deli on uh, Maple and Telegraph. Keep talking. And in in in, uh, in uh, Slower. yeah, in Michigan, and it was the bookstore was right next to it. You know, I remember seeing an interview when Steve's Deli went out of business, and Steve was uh, saying, "Oh, it's a crying shame because I feel like the margins were good on the on the on the rotisserie hot dogs, and the margins were good on the sandwiches, but." It was weird because the the magazine we were just spending so much on magazines and not getting enough back and. <laughs> Listen, I got I, I got to pay off all my creditors. I I'm need to sell a bath the place. Porn. <laughs> yeah, right, I'm taking a bath in porn. <laughs> taking a bath. <laughs> oh God, I never had the balls to do any of that stuff. I wish I did. You I know? stole a joy buzzer once. I was like you, Dan. I I, I did <laughs> it once buzzer. and immediately got in trouble. <laughs> a jerk. A joy <laughs> buzzer. I was in the five and time five and I only did it just to do it. Like oh, yeah, but think about it though. If you're gonna steal something. So the, co- yeah. the the cop catches they they take you back to, they take you downtown, and they hold up the joy buzzer. Son, can you explain this? No, I cannot. <laughs> I <actually> yeah. Can. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess I, I can't explain it. I guess it was funny in the in the twenties. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> you know, if, if you're going to be stealing stuff like a joy buzzer, you might as well put the wig on, steal the nose, steal the giant shoes too, seltzer bottle, and just just walk out of there like like you know confidently. No yeah. one will suspect a thing if you've got the entire clown outfit. <laughs> the police let me go, and I kindly offer them some gum. Here, do you want uh, licorice or fruit? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Before I leave, smell this flower. Uh, <laughs> I never. Oh, I stole with the one pack the of gum. I, out of yeah. <laughs> I love it. And they open up his clown outfit. And there's just 20 porno mags in there. <laughs> He's just filled up with porno mags. Just a vicious cycle. Yeah. Just vicious. Yeah. I gotta go get. A, I gotta go. I gotta go steal something. Then you come home. I gotta get rid of this thing. Yeah. Oh my god. Sometimes I'm very happy that I, I don't have boys. <laughs> yeah. Well yeah. that cuts both ways though, doesn't it? You know? You yeah. you 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 have a, you've got daughters in a Donald Trump world. Beautiful. No. No, I'm yeah. just saying. Yeah. yeah, that's not that's Well, I'm just saying it's a fact that we're dealing uh, with. You know, come on. So what terrible. So yeah. So that's what see what happens when, when the gopher comes back into the minute, we start talking about stuff. Yeah, we, should, of the we should thank that gopher. So yeah, maybe that's, the, that's yeah. It digs we stuff up that gopher. It, it burrows in and digs up old stuff, <laughs> right? That gopher stuff better left buried. Mm-hmm. Frankly, yes. Woods porn. Yeah, but I, I would have to. I would trek all the way down the street, 
two miles to the to the to the thing. Two to miles. The store. Wow. I imagine you explaining to your grandkids or whatever. Oh, what are you complaining about? I used to go two <laughs> miles for my porn. <laughs> I didn't just pick up my fancy laptop and right and go I to porn dot com. The Terminator is... brain computer glasses. <sighs> I can't believe that. I mean, I I haven't thought long and hard about this, but like that's what, what a crazily different world. I mean, people have written articles about that, but I mean, mm-hmm. you l- listen to what you had to go through to get to basically rent your porn for like ten minutes before you shredded it and needed it again. <laughs> we are such but like weird. you know, kids to the kids yep. these days. Oh my gosh, it's a whole different gonna world. Going to be exposed to so crazy much stuff. Yeah. I got to um, think there's no way it could be as exciting for, and I don't want to listen. I don't want to glorify that. There's lots of right. problems with the porn world and all the rest I of that understand. stuff. Okay. But as a kid, you can't, no court's going to convict me. Officer but Haynes would not. Officer Haynes would not approve, but I'm just saying like there was, when you did, when you did finally say like, Oh, I got a stash here. I've yeah. struck gold. It was, it, well, there's no yeah. way that a kid now is going to have that kind of enjoyment or that kind of excitement of like, I've got yeah. something here. Right. It's like when the world, when you can have just anything. Yeah, but but the thing is also you have to, when you have that physical stash, you have to hide it. Yeah, right. You have yeah, to figure yeah. out a place to put it. And it's in the closet making noises like the, like the yeah. telltale heart. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Okay, here's one last story. Okay, you better make it quick because I got to go. I know. I got my so popcorn. I remember I think I, I had somebody at a, at a magazine, mm-hmm. and I was like, you know what? I want this magazine. <laughs> and... <laughs> but I couldn't take it from his room, so I just ripped out like three of the pages. <laughs> I stuffed them in my pocket and I ran home. Yeah, and wow. I buried it in the bottom. You know, remember we had those big toy bins? Yeah, where, sure. Well, like they were like just you just stuff yeah. all your toys in there. Hey, you put it beneath your penthouses. <laughs> no, I stuffed I stuffed it underneath <laughs> like all the matchbox cars and action figures and all that shit that nobody goes through. Right. Yeah. One afternoon, my mom was like, or one day I was like, you know what? I'm sick of your room's a goddamn mess. We're, I'm going in there and cleaning it up. Right, and oh, I said, "Fine, reason. do whatever the hell you want." So I left, right. and then I'm outside, like throwing the ball around with somebody, and and it hit me. I go, "Oh shit!" Yeah, right. <laughs> the ball hit you in the head because you stopped and froze. <laughs> yeah, it hits me right in the head. I said, "Oh shit!" <laughs> so I ran inside. <laughs> yeah, I ran inside, hauled up the stairs, and she was right near that thing. Oh and no! I said, "No, no, no! Get out of here!" Oh, it was in slow mo. You dove. <laughs> I dove in there. My arm went in there, and I grabbed it, and I stuffed it in my pa- in my pocket, and I ran out of there. And, oh my god! And I came you know, back. She... I got rid of it. I did. I destroyed it. And I came back in the house, and she, and she was just staring. She goes, "You want to explain to me what the hell that was about?" Oh, <laughs> I said, "It's nothing." She goes, "What did you want me to see?" I said, "It's nothing." Your mother. So then I you. said, uh, "I I got a lie." I go. <laughs> I go. I go. It's. I was writing down my thoughts, mom. <laughs> I, had oh, a, oh, I said, I'm, good. I'm trying to keep a little bit of a diary. And I was trying to work out. <laughs> oh, my God. I said, I'm, I'm like Samuel on. Peeps. <laughs> <laughs> I said I was writing some 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 things down. And I didn't Samuel want to. Samuel Peeps, though. <laughs> Dear Penthouse Forum, <laughs> here's my new diary. Yeah. You are not going to believe what happened to me today. No, but. And, and so she That's said, a good lie. And she, she totally good. bought it. And she said. You re, you, she goes, and then she went. I remember because she went and got me like a like a journal book. Oh my god! And she god, came I feel back bad. with, it and she goes, oh. "This is. I'm so happy that you like to write. Here's a journal book." <laughs> oh, and I felt like such an asshole. I'm like, "Well, oh. uh, thanks, man." But if that got you writing, then maybe it was a good. It was one of them, uh, you know, one of those lies that kind of led to something good. Maybe yeah. it got you writing. All right. The oh. lesson here is always steal porn because it'll lead to a bond between you and your mother. Um, 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 is that not what we just learned? I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's not what I learned from all that. That's exactly well, what I—that's what I learned okay. from the story. That's not, that's, <laughs> that's my takeaway. Yeah, I'll take away whatever I want. Yeah, the author's purpose is a uh, nil. That's what it, Samuel it, Peepshow taught me. <laughs> <laughs> it's that moment where you just you just remembered and ball just hits you in the head, bonk, <laughs> bonk. <laughs> oh, no. It made that coconut noise. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And you just fall ass to the door. <laughs> and you just hear you screaming, no, 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 oh, no, 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 no,
My son's a regular <laughs> Arthur Rambo up there. <laughs> <laughs> Scribbling his decadent poetry. <laughs> right, yeah. Uh, oh, my God. All right. All right. I got to well, go. We're exhausted. Yeah. All right, Dan's got to go. That means we got to go. Do the yeah. sign off. Do it. Yeah, Did we even I'm talk about Caddyshack this yeah, time? All right. Thank you for it. listening to our her twisted memories of Caddyshack Minute 24. Yeah. Come back next time where we will uh, discuss Minute 25 of Caddyshack. Yeah. Uh, hopefully we're yeah. done with that gopher. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but don't thank know. you for listening. I'm here. Uh, Mike apologizes, apologizes for everything. Yeah. Right. Sorry, to up, Sorry to Steve's deli. Put him out of business. Hey, you scratched my ankle. <laughs>